Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at tempo inside Logic. We're going to do a series of videos on tempo this week. I think we have three of them planned where we're going to look at different aspects of controlling your tempo. Today specifically, we're going to be looking at recording MIDI without a click track and having the tempo be auto-analyzed and usable within your project for your song. This is one of the coolest new features inside Logic. It's been around now for a little bit, but it's really incredible how well this works, how easy it is to do, and it takes the pressure off having to use a click track. So if you're interested in being able to record with your MIDI keyboard without having to perform with a click track and just doing it freeform, this is the video you need to watch. Okay, so I have a piano loaded up and a track, and we're going to use this as our demonstration here. We could even close down this. This is typically how it might look when you first load it up. And we're going to come up here to our tempo option and we're going to set this to adapt even before that let's open up the project settings this is where we can also set it so we can set it to adapt here and what this means is that in any space that doesn't have a tempo set by a region or a file that we can have the input determine what's going to be the tempo let me give you a brief demonstration of this. Now the tempo goes orange instead of blue. I'm going to record. And actually, what I want to do even before that is turn off the metronome. We don't want this to be a metronome recording. And you can see now it gave us a tempo and it slowed down as I played slower. Let's turn the metronome back on so you can hear it match. And so it automatically figured that out for us as it went. Let's do one more example. Okay, so a little bit poor performance, not the best. This gives us a perfect example of the application of this tool. Let's just listen to it once. Did a pretty good job overall. Not bad. Let's come back in here for a second. I had the trim start of new region selected. If you don't have that, which is not by default, this is what happens. So there's a little bit of recording happening here. Now you can see there's a little bit of empty space right there. I typically will leave let me undo those. I typically will leave the trim start of new regions in here. And with this, the new recording, so we have the defaults for flex and follow region setting. I uh, almost always with new recordings, it's a little different, but I will align the bars and B. And I typically will leave the set imported audio files to off for this and do it on a case-by-case -case basis. So most of the time I'm using virtual instruments instead of loops I get from other places. If I am getting a loop from some other place, I typically will bring it in and do more of the manual stuff with it just because it's gonna depend on which file it is, etc. So let's close this now for a moment. There's more advanced things in there. We're gonna be covering those or some of those things in part two and three of this tempo series this week. But I want to really take this next piece, this part that we're going through, and show you some more about why this is important. So that performance wasn't super great. But now that it's recorded and has an analyzed tempo, I'm going to just double check some things with the editor here. So let's, um, let's not do it that way. Let's come down here in the bottom half. This is our smart tempo tool. 
So let's zoom out just a little bit. And now you can see we have markers. And the markers have these little node points on them. I can do move marker. I can scale selection. I can scale all or move all. That's for the first one. Now this one, I can scale left, move right. So you'll see that that's going to be different. The very first one doesn't have that one on it because you can't scale towards the left. You're at the very first. I could move this one right into place there. And I could actually come through and manually move all of these if I wanted to. We don't necessarily want to put them on there because we're going to quantize this later. But I am going to, because it was pretty close, we're going to keep some of these as they are. But this one here, it's like just a little bit off. Well, I'm also looking at spacing between them. So now these markers look so far like they're in a decent place. Let's actually push play. And that did come in right uh, kind of on a downbeat, but just a hair before it. Okay. Now I'm going to close the editor here. Next step I'm going to do is actually set my tempo to whatever I want it to be. But I can just drag it out like this now. So now I've gotten rid of the tempo variations. Still some right before the beat, but I left them like that in the first editor. But I, I smoothed out the tempo now so that it's a more consistent tempo. Last thing I'm going to do is smart quantize this to the smallest divisible note, which may end up being eighth notes, but we're going to try, well, let's do eighth notes first. I think it actually will end up being sixteenth notes. But. like that. We'll just change the overall quantization strength. So we'll put it down to 90%. So it's not 100% quantized. then if I really still have some other things I want to change here, I would come in and do them manually. So I think I want to put that one right on the downbeat. And then we'll move these ones so that they're right like that. might be missing a whole note there. Let's move this one in a fraction. So this may have been one of the examples where the scaling option might have given us a little bit better results at the end because I'm having to move everything just a little bit. Let's undo I think we'll leave it. So you get the idea. I played it free form, no metronome, nothing. It got me the tempo for the three main sections there. I went through, just tidied up some of the smart tempo options. After that, I flattened the overall tempo so that it became one tempo. And because it's all locked in, it strips the tempo but keeps it in time, meaning that 
the notes are actually adjusted then to play in one tempo. It doesn't just leave the original timing as it was. Then I was able to do smart quantized to eighth notes, and we ended up with a performance then that actually was quantized to those notes. And I reduced the quantization to 90%. That way it wasn't uh, fully doing the 100% robotic. It still had a little bit to it. Smart quantize, that's similar to classic quantize. What smart quantize does, though, is if two notes are exactly starting at the same time or they get pulled in to start at the same time, it's still going to allow variations there so it sounds more like there's a, a roll happening or a slight delay between them so that you get the sense that it's an actual still, in this case, piano player playing it instead of an exact robot. What you can do then with all of this, because now we have this performance, we could do things like add the drummer track and let's do something really, I think, chill on that one. Let's see. Okay, one more time, I'm changing it simpler. So one thing we can do now that we have this is use the groove track in order to match the drums and the piano. Groove track, we right click here, we can turn it on under our track header components. And I will say, it seems to be that if we're gonna do quantization without the groove track, then I use smart quantization for keyboards. But the minute I'm starting to do this, I need to use the classic quantize. And that seems to give a lot better results when marrying two parts together like this. The groove then sets one of these two as the master clock in terms of timing, and the other one, if we check on it, will follow it. We can try doing this, let's see. We can try doing this the other way too, see if that gives us good results. I probably like that one better with the drummer as the groove master because it's giving it a little bit more of that infused feel to it. Let's try possibly some of the other kits here. Songwriter, we can do a funky songwriter. I'm doing this off the cuff. I'm not prepping this in advance, so we'll see how it sounds. It's following it decently. Let's try this with the piano then, setting the, the funk drummer a little bit off. We do have to come back in, because once we do this, we have to reset it, because I turned off the quantize by using the groove. And let's set that to 16th notes. With uh, classic quantize, I have to do 16th notes. With the smart one, I can do eighth notes or others, and it changes the feel. So kind of a, a non-funky funk pattern when you do it that way, but it's uh, an option for sure. I want to go back and see the roots brush see how this is affected and we're gonna let's try this again because we've made changes let's just reset this there we go i 
And then let's swap them like that. So you can hear the nuances of everything changing. Uh, I love to be able to work with tempo this way. It feels a lot more to me like I'm the, the leader of the band and I'm saying, hey, drummer, you focus on getting the feel just how you want it. Keyboard player, follow their feel. Or swapping it and saying, hey, keyboard player, you're really determining the feel of this. Everybody else, including the drums, t follow their lead and get into their pocket. So now, instead of having to go through and change notes or make adjustments or whatever, I'm using these tools to really fine tune it. This all started with kind of a, a hokey piano example that I played to show how to move something from out of time into time using the automatic adapt features and then quantization and then going through to the groove track. All of this ties together and helps you create the exact feel you want. Imagine what you can do with a real piano player. Okay, that's it for this first part on the tempo series. We're going to be doing more with this, tying it all together in the next two videos.